Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and I am with my lovely wife and my hairless dog. Um, uh, and we're here to do, obviously, a blind tasting show, right? Yes. Uh, it's exciting. We were just kind of talking about, I don't know how it came up that we wanted to do it. We're, we're doing all Belgian wit beers, or white beers, as some people call them, or they're alternatively known, or beers blanche. They're mm. also known as uh, very popular style mm -hmm. in in craft beer. In fact, the number one selling craft beer or pseudo craft beer you want to, if you depending on how you uh, consider uh, Blue Moon, is a whip beer. Right. So what we want to do is put some of kind of the heavy hitters or notable names in whip beers face to face. I mean, we've done kind of style shows before, and mm -hmm. we. Yeah, he's just flying around. It's <laughs> fine. Um, and we've done them unblind, so why not just do one blind? Just yeah. Kind of see. So, yeah, go on. And I'm gonna say, I think this is a really interesting idea because I do want, I am very curious to know if some of the heavy hitters hold up to, you know, the, the craft beers. Um, so, for yeah. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, we do have Blue Moon in here. Um, we're not going to go through all of them, obviously, you'll, you'll find out. But I want to talk just briefly about the history of. Whit beer, because I think it, it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's a beer from uh, Flanders, in Belgium, and it's actually was known in, in a very specific region, and the town of Hoogarden was known for their wit beers, mm -hmm. the wit beers there. Uh, originally, these were, wit means white, uh, mainly that they were just very light beers. Uh, they have a high content of wheat in them, and that gives them almost like a little sharp. He's hitting the, the thing. Yeah. yeah. Ruining everything. Yeah. Ruiner. Talking to you. Um, so they have a high concentration of wheat, anywhere from 30 to 50% wheat, or maybe more. Uh, and it gives them a nice tart, very easy drinking beer, light beer, um, and they're ver they're known to be you know highly quenching, mm -hmm. low alcohol. And originally these beers were spontaneously fermented, so they were even more tart. Um, they ha were very similar to the beginnings of Berliner Weiss, which we've had a show about before. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they were so tart that they used to add spices to them, mm -hmm. two spices or. Um, Flavoring. Flavorings that stuck around are coriander and, and coriander seed, not not cilantro as we call it, <laughs> and uh, dried uh, bitter curacao orange peel. Mm -hmm. And those are still the hallmarks of wit beer. Mm -hmm. Is you can have a lot of spices, I guess, in there, but the two big ones are coriander and curacao orange peel. Right. And what happened was. Um, slowly the popularity, like so many regional beer styles, kind of waned for these uh, Belgian white beers. And eventually, in like I think 1950 or something, 1955, okay, the last white beer brewery in Hoogarden, which was the last white beer brewery in the world, stopped making beer. Mm -hmm. So then the style was effectively dead. Mm -hmm. um, the story then goes 15 years later, 16 years later, uh, a guy by the name of Pierre Sellis was... It's nine years later. Okay. All right. Well, I, I didn't research the <laughs> dates. I just know the story. Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about these beers that they knew as, as children. Uh, Pierre actually had worked for one of the local breweries as a kid and said, you know, I love these beers. I miss these beers. Um, he actually lived next to one of the old breweries in Hoogarden. There used to be many breweries in the town. And he said, you know what, I'm going to start. He was a milkman at the time. Right. And so that's what I think is interesting. He was a milkman. He, so he sort of had equipment and he had a little bit of a production background. And yeah. of course, like you said, he worked at one of the breweries, yeah. the last one that had, had been open. So he decided, hey, I want to make this beer again. And he found one of the last brewers of the style, got some information from him. How do, how do we make this beer? And they started brewing it again and it became very popular in Belgium, and it became widely, success, highly successful. Um, and that is wit beer. That is the direct descendant of every wit beer in, a, in the world today. M maybe not ever, but now they're all descendant from 
Hugarden and from Pierre Salas. And I think that's such a great story, you know, how he, he saw that um, a product of his homeland was kind of being, you know, forgotten about. His hometown. To yeah, yeah. For, to, to his hometown was was on the verge of just being becoming extinct, basically. Yes. And he revived that. I think and now it's cool. now the number one selling craft beer in the world is a wit beer. Yeah. Yeah. And he kind of tragically, there was a fire in 1985 1985 okay and he didn't have the money to rebuild the brewery so he went to um, the uh, Stella Artois in uh, InBev now and they helped him refinance it but they also took a piece of it and eventually they took over the whole brewery and they they took ownership from him um, kind of a, to me a little bit of a sad ending he went on and, and started another brewery and you know he he was fine you know you don't have to worry about him fine. yeah uh, he actually moved to Texas and started yeah, making whip right. beer there, but you know I think it was a little bit ahead of his time, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's some funny pictures of him wearing like a bolo tie, kind of fitting right into to Texas. Um, so that's kind of the one big brand, and then the other one is Blue Moon. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that it is brewed by Coors. Uh, it is a Miller Coors beer, but it it's not like like I don't have Shock Top here. Shock Top is just you know, the big wigs saying, we need something to compete with, with Blue Moon. Blue Moon was actually developed at the Sandlot, which is kind of a small craft brew pub that's in Coors Stadium, Coors Field in Denver. Right. And they're very highly respected. Uh, it's kind of like the, not only the testing grounds, but also just like a playground for some brewers at Coors. And they came up with this Blue Moon beer, and it was directly... Uh, uh, descended from Who Garden, and they decided they wanted to do some sweet orange peel. They thought it might play a little bit better to American palates. I still have coriander in it as well, and they serve it with a slice of orange. And basically, through you know, they obviously have good distribution, but very low marketing, just kind of grassroots. It slowly and slowly built, built, built until it became a big product. And then, you know, now you see commercials for it and oh, everything. Sure. No, but it, it really did start in a very grassroots craft mm -hmm. beer way, mm -hmm. considering it, it is a Coors beer. Sure. So it did kind of grow on its own merit. It wasn't just whatever you, you know, throw a lime and make it into a margarita beer and you just plaster it everywhere, <laughs> Bud Light Platinum, you know, where you literally launch it on well, Super Bud Light Bowl. Bud Light did a wheat beer, or a Bud Light, uh, Budweiser, right? Didn't they? Didn't they Bud Light wheat. Yeah. Yeah. It was a Bud Light wheat. Okay, well, yeah. but you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. you launch with a huge campaign first. Right, yeah. This was very uh, organic. Mm -hmm. So, then we got, we've got a couple other ones, but I think those are the two big ones I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, so the main components of this beer is wheat, light, refreshing, Coriander and um, orange peel. an orange peel and unmalted wheat almost always rather than malted wheat like you get in the German style uh, Hefeweizens and, and stuff like that. So sometimes right. a little bit of oat as well. Yes, I did notice the Blue Moon is brewed blue, blue with oat. Yeah, which I thought was interesting. So uh, why don't we start A to D? Yeah, we're kind of. So you're just gonna grab the starter. grab the glass. Be careful not to disturb the bag. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll just uh, start to evaluate yeah, it. We're going to sharing. Yeah, share, share the glass. Yeah, and just hold it up so they can see over the bags Here, as well. well. Uh, shall I hold it for both of us? Sure. So very, very light. Yeah. I mean, straw colored, but but like a almost like a lemonade color. I was going to say lemony for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Very pale. Like um, very white mm -hmm. um, foam to it. A nice little retention and hazy yeah it's another classic they they it's a very hazy beer they leave the yeast in there or if they do a secondary fermentation they use a yeast that doesn't really drop out very well oftentimes so um, kind of a hallmark of the style so mm -hmm. do you want to sniff it first don't hand it to me don't just drink it like you are wont to <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not not a whole lot going on in the nose. It's it's to me, it's just a very uh, very light nose, very s minor citrus character I get out of that. Yeah, a little bit of like a just a hint of a, 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 like a, I was gonna say a twang of kind of like a bright brightness yeah. to it. But you are getting coriander, absolutely. Um, 
Just relax. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, of course you will. Uh, but yeah, it, it smells, uh, I was going to say, like, it smells spritzy. That's not really yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it smells spritzy to me. Yeah, and I'm getting definitely a, a bit of coriander in there as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess I do get some spices that are that are deep down in that, but the, uh, so, for me it was... Go mind ahead. if I drank it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's also not, it doesn't really have much going on in the taste either. Yeah. Um, just kind of, uh, you know, very, leaves your mouth, you know, very quickly, I think, and, and just kind of washes away. But you get, you, you get, no, I'll bring it back out. Um, you get some, I guess, mild lemon or, you know, citrusy flavors out of that as well, just like I did on the nose. Mm -hmm. You definitely get some of that wheat character, a little tart, um, a tartness to it. You have uh, a very kind of drying quality as well. Mm -hmm. It's very kind of quenching. It's something that I think you could drink a lot of. It's a very light beer. There's not a whole heck of a lot going on. I'm getting a little bit of that um, coriander, but not much. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's a decent beer. But I think you're right. I mean, there's just not, it's, for me, it's just, there's not much going on with this at all. I'm not getting a lot of those really kind of pleasant um, flavors that I associate. Getting a little bit of a papery quality to it as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I didn't actually check, I think, any of these beers for their dates. So, my hmm. bad. Hmm. Yeah. So, what am I going to give this beer? You know, I'll go 87. I mean, it's just kind of. It's fine. There's not. I mean, there's some nice flavor on a nice hot day. Would I like a cold glass of that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a good point. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll go with you on 87. I'm. I'm. Just, well, what do you think? What yeah, do you think? I'm just not. What, what are you scoring it? Uh, yeah, 87 is fine. I. 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 I I don't, I don't like it, I guess, uh, but I, I do see the point of if it was a hot day, sure, that's a very quenching beer. Do you uh, think 87 is too high for you? Uh, yeah. If I, I mean, I might go lower. You are so so go lower. But, I mean, it, but it's not undrinkable. It's it's just well, eighty seven is still a B O B kind of. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah, and I think that's fair. I, I'm fine with that. Okay, here's the next one. A little bit more golden colored, mm -hmm. uh, equally hazy. A um, little bit more of a head going on. Brilliant white. I mean, they are very attractive looking beers. Sure, absolutely. So can I give this one a yeah, second? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, double sniffer. Mm -hmm. Now this one has more going on. This one I'm Absolutely. definitely getting both the orange, the curacao, and the coriander. Yeah. See, and this is more of what I was looking for with the first one. You know, like yeah, it, it, it just it was just way too subdued, I think. And maybe mm -hmm. it had age on it. Maybe that's why you're getting that paper quality out of it. But um, mm -hmm. it just wasn't popping for me. Yeah, this does have a nice orange lemon. Mm -hmm. Really, I guess a lemon character to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean it's. Um, I guess orange is sort of the, the well. I guess you see, you see both. You see the lemon and you see the orange, mm -hmm. which is the orange is of course associated with the blue moon. Um, but I, I oftentimes get lemon out of out mm. of these beers. I, I I do get a lot more spice out of this one as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess it's the, it's the coriander that's kind of in there. I also get like a little bit of like a white pepper maybe or something like that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you definitely do. You get um, almost like a nice little drying chalkiness to it. You get a, a lot more yeast character. Mm -hmm. You get, I feel, both the the uh, the spices. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a little bit of pepperiness. That's probably from you know a light amount of uh, some of the, the, the esters from the yeast, mm -hmm. or maybe you know very low hopping. You know, maybe just a little bit of that spice on there as well. Yeah, it almost. I mean, I I, I start to get reminded of pumpkin beers with some of these. You know. Hmm. Just with the level of spicing, obviously it's not quite the level of a pumpkin beer, um, but but it starts to remind me of those types okay. of flavors. Yeah, a lot more going on, but still 
light-bodied, and very drinkable. Yeah. Um, I would definitely take this one over that. And Absolutely. I, I would go uh, quite a bit higher with this one. Um, I'll go... Uh, 92. Oh, wow. Um, I'm not going to go 92. I'll go 90. I think it's good. I think it's a lot better than the first one. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, just... Cool. Yeah. I hope I give a 92 to Blue Moon. <laughs> hey, if I do, I do. All right. The orangiest of the three, yes. by far. I mean, this is a the color of... And like we had caught lemon in some, we're getting orange in this one. Right, yeah, definitely like a light orange, almost Tiny. tangerine color. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Mm. Um, like the tiniest, teeniest bubbles. Yeah. Such a fine, tight, foamy head. Yeah, it's almost like little, like, like little soap suds or something like that. Dish sub, dish soap suds. Mm -hmm. My dear. Oh yeah, I <laughs> just smell it first. Yeah. I was just going right in. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has got an, uh, something funky going on on the nose for me. Uh, I think I need to smell it once more. Well, this one has a sweeter, fruitier smell to it. it but I think it's also got some weird spice notes in it uh, that I'm not completely on board with yet. I need to, I need You're to smell You're not 100% in love with I'm its tone right I'm now? I'm not 100% in love with the spice that I'm getting out of that. Yeah, um, go on. What? I'm sorry, when you smell the beer and you close your eyes, it just cracks me up. <laughs> cool. I'm glad I can bring a smile to your face, my bride. <laughs> and this one also smells a little old to me as well. Do you, okay. I mean, I don't know. No, I, I, the only one I got a little bit of a papery quality to was the first one. I'm getting like a fruity orange, like ripe orange juice. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a little bit of like a scented soap type <laughs> smell. Like, like not completely like you know like a, a like an orange make a really nice orange soap it smells like really orangey but not quite like something's there too there's is that soap quality or medicinal or something yeah yeah i'm kind of getting that too and i was like i kept thinking like plastic it's kind of like it? yeah good uh almost reminding me of something like artificial um but yeah i mean not not you know totally put off by that Mm. This uh, to me the sweetest I'm, of the of the three by far. Absolutely, the sweetest of the three. This you is know. this is way more orange juice than than the others. Yeah, orange juice is a, is a good way to put it. And I get like I do get like a, like a weird like almost perfumey quality out of it. Yeah, there's also um, perfumey is a good way to put it. A sweet car. Uh, it, it 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 finishes. Just, it's still dry, but there's a hint of like that fleshy fruitiness to it. It's not bad. It doesn't really have the same complexity as I think either of the other two do. Um, certainly not this. Um, I, I say I, I do like this more than the first. I think that, I think it just, you know, it has a little more complexity. It's got a little more going on yeah. than the first one, which I thought was just kind of like a like a rinse almost, you know, I hardly even realize what you drank. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that one. I'll go 88 with this one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we might be skewing a little high for some of these, honestly. You might be right. Yeah. Because I'm solid with a 92, but this being a 88 and that a 92, I mean, four points away. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. I, was I mean, maybe this should be, that. maybe this should be 87, this should be 86 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we might need to revise our rating scale. Here. Yeah. So, finally, of D, it looks very similar, at least from memory. I can't really see it from the first one. Um, lemony, uh, also clearer than the others as well. Yeah, you're right. Uh, still hazy, but, you know, you're, you can still kind of see through a little bit. Mm -hmm. The uh, tight lacing um, on there and just a really nice looking uh, white bright, bright white foam. Mm -hmm. It's really a nice contrast. Good looking beer. So, you first? Sure, sniffy sniff. Um, again, I'm just not, not a ton going on with this one, but I mean, there's some lemony, you know, qualities to it. A little bit of like, the, like you know, like graininess in it as well. I guess that's the... I think there's a... Yeah, I'm getting actually a lot more in this one. I'm, I'm getting some of that Belgian yeast bubblegum quality yeah, to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I get some uh, of the, the orange peel. Yeah. And you're getting coriander as well. I mean, you are getting what they're putting in here. Um, 
a lot of kind of, a lot of bubble gum, a lot of bubble gum in that one. Yeah, you're right. This is a quite a bit of bubble gum. I think like I've I've just smelled in so many of these. Mm -hmm. It's like it's tough to to pick stuff out anymore. Yeah. Sorry. I'm gonna have a taste. Yeah, it's bubblegum with like a hint, like a coriander hint to it. You yeah. Know? See, this one I, I do get bubble gum on, bubble gum on the taste as well. This one is kind of more like what it's a good example of what the first one was trying to be. You know, uh -huh. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Like it's it's just executed a lot mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree. I'm, it's also spritzier. Mm -hmm. It's got a higher level of carbonation. It's also creamier. The mouth feels fuller than any of the ones so far. Um, so I, I just, yeah, to me, it. it yeah, I'm, I'm good. Definitely spritzy. You got that bubble gum. In the background, you've got the coriander. I don't know if I'm getting a lot of the bitter orange peel. I get like a citrusy Maybe. like twang in it. Is yeah, it, but that will? could be from the yeast. It could be from the wheat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like in this one, I really felt like I was getting the, the curacao. Yeah. Can I have the taste of the first one again? Yoink. Yoink. I almost hit the mic. That would have been good. Yeah, I mean, going back to this one. It's like... Mm. Well, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, that one's really, really watery. Um, yeah. All right, I'll go 86, 87, 92, and 90 for the last one. I like that one. Yeah, I mean, I think you and I agree then on the same the same principles, and I think our ratings at this point it would be so so, you know, minorly different uh -huh. that it's not even worth it. But yeah, I, I vote this is my favorite. Uh huh. First, mm -hmm. second. For me, I'm going first, second, third, fourth. For me. Yeah. All right. I'll do first, second, third, just because I do like this one, but it did have some a little bit too much uh, like perfumey. Yeah. Floral notes in it. For yeah. Me. And then the that yeah this first one I. So are you are you interested in wagering a guess for what these are? I have some ideas on what they, guess. they could be. I'll do a guess and you okay. can say. I'm gonna say. From uh from my right to my left, Who Garden, Allagash, Blue Moon, Whitakirk. So now you know the beers that we're tasting. And to be fair, I have not had any of these beers. The most recent beer I've had is probably six months ago, and most of these beers I have not had in a year plus. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, so I'm not I, like going from memory when I say that. The, the uh, I'm not sure about. I, I guess I, I do think this is Blue Moon, just because of like the. It just tastes so much different from all the yeah, others. Yeah, 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 and. Um, and I think Who Garden. I think that's the lightest because I think. Very likely, the recipe has probably changed. They've probably changed the recipe. They've probably lightened it up, went mass market with it. That's my guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I, I, I you know, the only one I'm really confident about is I, I'm, okay. I'm almost certain that's Blue Moon. Um, All right, so we'll go from this one. And to this I know, one. like this, I don't, don't think is Alakash White. So what, what, which one do you think this is? Um, I think it's either Who Garden or Whitkirk. I mean, by process of elimination. Pick one. Okay, uh, it is Whitkirk. You said Who Garden. I'll go Whitkirk. Whit Whitkirk. Whitkirk. So Whitakirk. we'll go bottom. We'll go low to high. Okay, let's do it. Whitaker. Oh, there it is. The lowest. And it's a, the little can of Whitaker. You know, we should have known that uh, it, it may not be a good beer because oftentimes people cook with Whitaker. You may have seen people cooking like mussels and stuff like that with Whitaker. Uh huh. I'm surprised. There yeah. you go. Cause so I've, you were right, I, and, I've and ordered, I am wrong. I was, and I and I've ordered Whitakirk in a bar and mm -hmm. been pretty, you know, happy when I get it. Yeah. Um, I wonder if there is. I wonder if this is a little old or something. Um, because like I said, I I've ordered it before and, and been pretty pleased. So. Yeah. Uh. Oh, 2013. No, yeah, it's good through uh, January. Uh, next January. Next January. So, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. So it's not. Expired. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, sorry, Whitaker, but yeah, no problem. Just wasn't right. feeling it today. We're not feeling you. You were just not not enough to stack up to the rest. Right. Maybe on a hot day, the most refreshing. Mm-hmm. 
but we'll see. All right, and then this one we're saying is Blue Moon. I think I'm, both agree. I'm pretty sure it's Blue Moon. Yep. Blue Moon. Ta -da! Blue Moon. Belgian Blue Moon. Wine. Also, uh, quite fresh. The uh, the best buy date is uh, September, and we're now in April. Okay. So plenty of time for that. Yeah, I mean, just very different. You can tell that it it is kind of been changed for what they thought American palates would be, but mm -hmm. you know. Honestly, was it a bad beer? No. No, not a bad beer. No. I, I, I uh, And then we're again. going here, so I'm going to say Who Garden now, but I said Whitaker originally. Right. Who Garden Who it Garden. is. And I, Who Garden I go. also really enjoy as well. Yeah. Um, you know, again. And I like that you said, I mean, these two did taste, I, I think you put it very well when you said, this beer is doing what this beer is trying to do. Right, right, right. It is doing it. So, yeah, yeah it's good. Um. So there you go. Uh, my uh, Wednesday Best Buy, uh, end of the year, uh, December. Cool. And, and finally, then... the winner, Allagash <laughs> wow, White. nice. From Portland, Maine. I, I have to say, I am surprised that we both you know, like universally thought that the Allagash White, because I think it was like far and above yeah. better than anything else on the table. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I'm a little surprised about that. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm surprised is because Who Garden, and I, who Garden I, I expected would probably be my favorite just because, yeah. I mean, hey, they almost and, re, they revive the style. And I, I, I have to say, I am go, going back to saying how surprised I am about Whitaker. Yeah, and in fact, I mean, uh, sometimes I, I definitely just combine, I lump all my scores together so close. We don't really do a true judging or there's, we just do whatever number we kind of pull out, you know. But the reality of it is these two beers were better. This beer is, you know, 92, 93. This beer is, you know, 89, 90. Yeah. These two beers, I'd say, you know, maybe this is uh, 80. Well, maybe it's not that far off. 86, and maybe this is like an 85, which is kind of, I'm slowly lowering these two I don't down. Know. I think but, this was significantly better than the White Kirk, at least today. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, I have to say, okay, and the other surprise is just how that, but Blue Moon, it really is really still, in my mind, a solid beer. Um, sometimes I kind of write it off, you know, you, you kind of, you, that's your entry level craft beer, if you will. Um, and then sometimes you kind of say, ah, Blue Moon, Belgian White, I've had a million times. Um, but, you know, look at it again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is very different from the others. So if you do like Blue Moon, why not grab a Who Garden, yeah. widely distributed, as is Allagash out of uh, Portland, Maine. Um, really, now this one, why did I pick this one? Because I think to the hardcore craft beer scene, this is the standard that all other wit beers are put against. This one wins award after award, and you can see. I mean, I think... It was a pretty easy choice here, which yeah. one was our favorite. Yep. It was definitely this, yeah. and then uh, it was, I think, certainly that, and then, okay, well, I could see you liking this more, maybe, but... but Yeah. Because this one was so different, I mean... Yeah, it really is. Um, so orangey. Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely kind of, you know, kicked the sweetness up a bit and kicked the floral yeah. character Hey, up and I am... I'm, we can do them this way now, maybe. Um, and I'm excited that Who Garden... Uh, Came in second, you yeah. know, the original. It still, it still got it. And when I was like, "Oh, this one's so watered down," to, in my mind, I was thinking, "Oh, they've watered down the recipe," because <laughs> you know, I don't know why I thought that, but <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. Um, so there you go. And I also remember having Whitakirk a long time ago on a hot day yeah. and being like, and downing it, yeah. and being like, "Oh man, this is great." Well, not great, but. That really hit the spot. Yeah, exactly. So, well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed our blind tasting of wit beers. Summer's coming. This is a great beer for summer. The Belgian wit beer slash Belgian white. Um, white beer, wit beer, same thing. And hey, guys, go for the Allagash White. It is also by far the priciest of these. So you're looking at something like $7.99, 8 dollars a six pack which is uh maybe this was 9.99 this is 9.99 six pack this is going to be about nine bucks a four pack mm. so it is more i do think if you really are looking to, to 
enjoy the beer. It is worth that extra money. Mm -hmm. But if if not, if you're just looking for some beers to kind of enjoy, go Who Garden. Yeah. You know. I have to agree. And it is Who Garden. It is not Ho Garden. <laughs> yeah. What? What? <laughs> I don't know if I find it funny. What What did you find funny? Ho Garden. Ho Garden. I've said it. Trust oh, me. yeah. Yeah. All right, so, Max is acting up. It's time to... Max is a, acting this up. This is a wrap. This yeah. is a wrap. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for dealing with all our issues and our giggles and our dogs and me rambling on about obscure beer styles. But we always appreciate you guys checking us out. But we got to go because we've got some really good wit beers to drink. And hopefully, you do too.